friends, it's Lana Ballot, and today I'm going to show you the first stages of the tall dune painting. The pastel I already completed, and you can see it at the left, and the reference picture is at the top. The photo was taken last year, around Christmas time, in one of our trips to Massachusetts, and the little town is called Sandwich, and the park, this beautiful dune park, uh, just gave me a lot of inspiration for paintings. I did not paint plein air because it was too cold and I just didn't have my setup with me. But right now I'm trying to do justice in my studio. I usually like to start with a thumbnail and uh, it's definitely the best to spend some time making a thumbnail, grayscale thumbnail or a few of them and figuring out what's not working and how to improve it. At first I was considering the horizontal format because I really like those trees and I figured if they are too far away in the distance I'm not getting to see them much but when I actually laid it out I decided that vertical format is really going to express that feeling of a tall dune and that eventually became the title of this painting and it just flows better. Horizontal was actually giving too much emphasis on those flat low to the ground shapes. Like in the beginning when I just started painting, drawing, um, I really wanted to get it as close as possible to what I see and quite often you try to get it there and then you're disappointed, it's like something is not quite working. So after a while I realized that um, we really shouldn't put everything into the painting. Uh, into the composition. Not every element deserves to be there. And these thumbnail sketches, they really help to work it out. What to put emphasis on and uh, maybe even sometimes I get carried away and start putting a little bit too much detail into my thumbnails. Uh, but it also helps me to see what kind of marks I might be making later with pastels. It's important to create a sense of depth in a painting, particularly in a realistic painting, and that's what I'm striving for. And it helps if uh, there's a path for the eye to follow, so the main dark element is not the last one that people see at the top of the hill and that's why I made the dune behind a little bit more prominent and it's not uh, kind of on the same line. If I draw the line from the top of the trees now it's not on the same line as the top of the uh, dune that's further behind. I also split it in two shapes so in the distance you still see the um, progression from the taller dune to the smaller dune further away. Uh, it does help. There's a path for the eye to follow and of course with my colors and with my values uh, I will make sure that there's a um, sense of depth so it's cooler in the background and uh, a little bit lighter. And then I just look at the elements where maybe more emphasis is needed and how to lead the eye through the painting better. But otherwise it's not that much that I want to put into a value study. It's just a simple value study. And as far as the sky right now it's just kind of just a light value. But in a painting, I will try to create a little bit of movement there. Once the thumbnail is finished, 
I now can recreate that composition on the piece of paper that I'm using for the final painting and in this case it's UART it's 400 which I am using uh, beige, uh, beige color for landscapes usually when I do the underpainting and it is 400 grit I don't use the pencil to get a more exact design on the piece of your art but just kind of like make marks dividing the piece of paper into the shapes that I worked out in my thumbnail sketch and just making light marks with the color like in this case it's more like a magenta color and I know it will blend nicely into those shadow areas once I do the underpainting and I'm using new pastels I'm using hard pastels not just new pastels I also use Creta color Richardson uh, different types of hard pastels for underpainting usually it's just hard pastels because uh, there's less clogging the paper when you use them that way and uh, they also are less expensive so if um, you kind of want to just tint the paper basically with these colors underlying colors for the shapes in your painting then it just makes sense uh, to use hard pastels in this case uh, they do give a nice coverage uh, they they give a nice um, rich deep color and once I get the basic outlines I usually start with a darker color with the darker value and that kind of sets up their skeleton of a painting nice um, rich deep color well depends on the pressure if I press with a stick uh, harder then there will be more pigment deposited into the uh, tooth of the paper and it's going to be um, darker the colors I'm choosing for the parts in my underpainting are mostly depending on how far or how close the objects are and also how much light they're getting for example for the shadows I probably would choose the cooler colors but for areas that are in the sun uh, get a little bit more warmer treatment in my black and white sketch I broke the area of the grass on the dune uh, the front area into two parts basically the darker one that leads the eye from the foreground to the background and then the lighter part uh, that's closer to the trees in the distance and in my color for the underpainting I'm following a little bit of that scheme as well so I'm separating that by color I also don't want to go with the lightest value that's going to be in the final painting because I want to have a little bit of that darker color from underneath to build upon to give it more depth and more interest it's also very good for creating some texture to have uh, some darker color underneath for the lighter areas I just went with this kind of like light magenta pinkish color which also for the sky also is going to be kind of similar to that the reason I choose warmer color usually for the sky is because it's a light source and if I use um, warmer color then the underpainting kind of comes through 
the color that eventually is going to be on top of it and it just warms it up and makes it more glowing so that's why I usually like to have some warmth in the sky so this is almost there in terms of um, just being prepared colors are prepared and now I can start just washing the areas with the alcohol I like using alcohol here for the for this stage for the underpainting because it just seems to melt the pigment into the paper much nicer than just water water seems to kind of take the pigment off the paper more and run down with it so um, alcohol is kind of melts it into it so for that reason it's kind of nice using that and also if it's a demo I'm always pressed for time and I like to have um, you know something that dries out faster and also something that would not be making the paper buckle so alcohol works better this way as far as being precise in the underpainting yes you can take your time and just make it more perfect but um, since I'm kind of working very fast well this is sped up <laughs> the video is sped up like more than 300% uh, I believe it's 350 so I did not work that fast but I do try working uh, faster for the demos uh, whether it's live or whether I'm recording so I'm kind of trying you know not to get stuck on details too much besides um, underpainting is going to be covered up my main concern when I'm doing the underpainting is basically just to establish the overall areas so at this point it's uh, very messy but it does provide me with the blueprint for my painting and that was the most important part so anything that I didn't get right at this point it's correctable and thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet if you love pastels and if you enjoy watching pastel tutorials I will be posting the next installment into this tall dune painting. If you click the bell button, you will get notified when it comes out.